All right, welcome to part two of pearls. Now let's take a look at what the Bible has to say. Well, I was going to do pearls, but, uh, you know, got sidetracked with treasures and love. So Matthew chapter 13, verse 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now, do you know what a pearl is? It comes from oysters. Now, the thing is, oysters are on the, on the ocean's floor, and a grain of sand, the earth, will get in and rub against its body. And, of course, you know, you, you, sand... I don't know, any of you have gone to the beach and you get sand in your bathing suit or bikini or whatever, swimsuit, causes irritation. It rubs against, you know, you got this rough surface rubbing against your skin, your body. So what the oyster does is it secretes basically like the inside of the oyster shell. It's usually white and it's smooth. Well, it coats the sand the irritation of the world and makes a nice round pearl, which is basically what's made of the inside, the inside of the shell. Uh, you've heard a mother of pearl. Well, that's what it is. It's the inside of an oyster shell. It's white, usually white and smooth. So, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. So when the things of the world irritate the oyster, it covers it. So let's take a look. Now, in the book of Job, chapter 28, we're going to start in verse 9. Job is considered the oldest book in the Bible, the first book. But that's a study in and of itself. He putteth forth his hand upon the rock. He overturneth the mountains by the roots. Now, for those of you that don't know it, the Bible says that uh, the rock was Christ. Let's take a look at that. In 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 4, And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. You know, I, I know the Catholics love to tell you that Peter was the rock, but uh, my Bible tells me Christ is the rock. You know, got nothing against Peter, but uh, I think I'd rather have Christ as my rock than Peter. All right, so... Verse 9, he putteth forth his hand upon the rock. He overturneth the mountains mountains by the roots. Now, the thing is, when you, uh, if you did a study of mountains, you will find out that oftentimes the Bible speaks of mountains as being rulers and governments. But that's beyond the scope of this study. He cutteth out rivers among the rocks. Rivers of what? Living water? Isn't Christ say he's out of his belly would flow rivers of living water? And his eye seeth every precious thing. What is the precious thing of the Lord? The treasures, Israel. He bindeth the floods from overflowing, and the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price thereof, 
neither is it found in the land of the living. As long as you're alive in the flesh, you're not going to find it. It's not until after we're transformed from the vessel of flesh that we're going to find what we're looking for. The depth saith, it is not in me, and the sea saith, it is not in, with me. It cannot be gotten for gold. You can't buy eternal life with gold. I don't care how much you have. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. Do you know what a crystal is? Silver, I mean, I'm sorry, wrong. A diamond is a crystal. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. Now, I'm not saying this crystal is necessarily diamond, but uh, rubies, sapphires, emeralds, diamonds, they're all crystals. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls. For the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Whence then cometh wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living and kept closed from the fowls of the air. Destruction and death say, We have heard the fame thereof with our ears. God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and seeth unto the whole heaven, to make the weight of the winds, and the weigheth the waters by measure. When he, make, when he made a decree for the rain, and a way for the lightning of the thunder, then did he see it, and declare it. He prepared it, yea, and searched it out. And unto man he said, Behold! The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. So, we're supposed to have fear or respect for the Lord, and we're supposed to depart from evil. And boy, I'll tell you what, I mean, this is what Job said. So, there's people that will argue with this. Fear the Lord is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Now, here's an interesting verse in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus speaking. Verse 4, chapter 7, verse 4. Oh, how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. In other words, we gotta clear out we gotta we gotta clear out the wicked stuff out of our life before we try to clean out clean up somebody else, right? Shouldn't shouldn't we clean up our own house before we start telling other people how to clean up their house? Verse six. Now this is a command of Jesus. Give not, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Do you know what it means to rend? It means to, to tear. You ever seen uh, hogs? They got teeth, tusks. Uh, how many of you watched uh, Old Yeller, um, Disney's movie, you know, where Old Yeller got killed by the, the hogs? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the swine. They'll trample your pearls under their feet, and then they'll turn again, and they will tear you apart with their mouths, their tusks. So what does it mean not to give that which is holy unto the dogs? 
Oh boy. I'm going to get called something evil here. Psalms chapter 22. Now this, part of this is um, speaking about the crucifixion of Christ. Uh, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Isn't that what Christ said on the uh, said on the cross? Cross. In Matthew twenty-seven and verse forty-six, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, "Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani." That is to say, "My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me?" And it, what's funny is when you read, the Jews thought that Jesus was crying for Elijah, or Elias, Elijah the prophet. They didn't even understand the Hebrew that Jesus was saying. In verse 47, some of them that stood there when they heard that said, this man calleth for Elias, you know, Elijah. No, but you see, they, they didn't even understand Hebrew. And believe me, Jesus knew Hebrew. Back to Psalms 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and we're not confounded, but but I, I believe this is the subject. This is changing. I believe that this is actually uh, probably David, not speaking of Christ now. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. Of course, it could, you know, they, King, uh, Jesus was called the son of David. He was a direct descendant of King David, right? Um. Jesus was reproached of men and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out of the lip. They shake the head saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighteth in him. Ooh, let's take a look at that. Mark chapter 15 and verse 25. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. And with him they crucify two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, And he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroy, destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he calleth Elias. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let alone, let us see whether Elias will come and take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. Now, those of you that have never studied the office of the Levite priest, the high priest, in the book of Leviticus, 
once a year, they were to go in, the high priest alone was to go into the temple, the Holy of Holies, and offer a sacrifice unto the Lord once a year. And they had to bring blood. Matter of fact, there was a thing that they would tie a rope around his ankle so that if the Lord, if he did something wrong and the Lord struck him dead, they could drag his dead body out of there. I mean, that's how important it was to, you had to come to the Lord his ways, okay? You didn't practice a little bit of the Lord and a little bit of Satanism, you know, it just didn't work out that way. So Jesus gave up the ghost and the veil of the temple was rent in two from the top to the bottom. The veil was to separate the high priest and God from the people. But here, when Jesus died, the, the veil of the temple was rent from heaven to the earth, from the top to the bottom. There was no veil. The blood of Christ rent the veil between God and the people. He was the mediator of the covenant. And when the centurion, a Roman soldier, and when the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that he, he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, truly, this man was the Son of God. Even an unsaved Roman centurion, well, I don't know if he was unsaved, but he, he probably got saved. I mean, he said, truly, this man was the Son of God. He believed. But the Jews, the chief priests, they didn't believe. Oh, no. No, they mocked him. All right, let's go back to Psalms. 22, and uh, let's see. Verse 7. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake their head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, Let him deliver him, seeing he delighteth in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou did makes me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. For there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Basham have beset me around. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. Listen to this. Um, there was a song by the Guess Who um, that I listened to a lot when I was in high school. Um, what was the name of it? Hang On to Your Life. At the very end, in the long version, they quote this very thing, and it's about the crucifixion. Verse 14, I am poured out like water. Remember after Christ died, the centurion took a, a spear and poured it and pushed it, in, po pushed him into the side, into his heart. And what came out? Blood and water. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. Listen carefully. For dogs, for dogs have compassed me. And they're not talking about four-legged dogs with wagging tails. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. And that in Mark 15, if you uh, read the verses before that I read, this is that was fulfilled. The centurions cast lots for his uh, his garment. He had a quote that was woven without a seam. Seam. They didn't want to. They um, when they cast lots, it's it's sort of like gambling. You know, if you got six people and you draw lots, you know, you take six draws, one longer, one shorter. Um, you know, whoever gets the longest or the shortest straw, whatever. You know. That's what they mean when they said the short end of the stick. Um, you know, and whoever 
won the, the lot would get the coat that was made, the seamless coat that Jesus wore. But that's another study. I'm just pointing that out for those of you that are uh, students of the Bible. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. And you can read about that in Mark 15, the verses that uh, I didn't read that were prior to the crucifixion, right? But be not, be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength. Haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. For thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. You know, what's interesting, there's a, a rhinoceros, a rhinoceros, a rhino. There's two types. There's the African and the Asian. Just like there's two types of elephants. Uh, when you go to Thailand... They use Asian elephants. They can, they actually like mankind, and they can be trained. They use them to have their trunks and pick pick up logs, and they use them for building and things and clearing the land. An African elephant will trample you to death every single time. They cannot be trained. An Asian elephant can. Now, there's two types of uh, rhinoceros. There's the African elephant that has I mean, a rhinoceros that has two horns. And then there's the Asian elephant. I'm sorry, rhinoceros. Asian rhinoceros. It has one horn. Matter of fact, its Latin name is unicornis. Uni, as uh, you've heard of uno, which means one in Spanish. It comes from the Latin. Uno. Uni. You've heard of a unicycle, one wheel. Unicornis one horn. So the unicorn of the Bible is probably the one-horned Asian rhinoceros. How in the world did it become a horse with a horn sticking out of its head? Well, Satan. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him, all ye the seed of Jacob. Glorify him and fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him when he cried out unto him, he heard. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. All the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee, for the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. All they that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him. When they're talking about seed, they're talking about children. It shall be counted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he hath done this. Dogs. Two-legged dogs. Uh, Psalms 22.16. Didn't we just read, For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierce my hands and my feet. Oh, yeah. All right, dogs. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 8. The Lord God hath gathered the outcasts of Israel, saith, Yet will I gather others to him, besides those that are gathered unto him. All ye beasts of the field come to devour, yea, all the beasts in the forest. His watchmen, whose watchmen? The Lord's watchmen. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain, 
from his quarter. Hmm. Greedy dogs. They can never have enough. You know, in Matthew 7, 16, didn't Jesus say, Give not that Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye, ye your pearls before swine. Oh, yeah. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Concision has reference to circumcision. And who does the circumcision? The Jews. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoiced in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. See, we're better to worship God and be the circumcision of the Spirit instead of being like the Jews that are circumcision of the flesh. Revelation chapter 22, verse 1. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments. What? Now, this is Jesus speaking. This isn't me. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Ooh, that's lordship salvation. Isn't that what they tell you? Blessed, uh, You know what? Argue with Jesus. Don't argue with me. Argue with him when you meet him. And, it, and hopefully, uh, well, <laughs> it might be the white throne judgment. You know, that's the one where the people get thrown into hell. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. What city? New Jerusalem. For without, without, that means outside. We want to go in through the gates into the city. For without, on the outside, for without are dogs and sorcerers. That's a witch, a male witch, and whoremongers. That was me in my younger days. That was a, somebody that loves whores. Yeah, it could be male or female, right? And murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Jesus is the bright and morning star. Now watch out for these new Bible versions that in Isaiah 14, where they're talking about the, the, the one that fell from heaven, they're saying that that's the, the morning star. So is Jesus the morning star that fell from heaven, that's going down to the pit to be covered in worms? Uh, well, you know, I, and then they'll tell you that Lucifer in the King James is wrong. But it's perfectly proper to use a name that Jesus used for himself as being the morning star, as having fallen from heaven. No, I think the King James Bible people got it right in Isaiah 14 when they said Lucifer fell from heaven. But the new Bible versions want you to think that Jesus, the morning star, fell from heaven. I did an entire Bible study on it. If you are interested in taking a look at it, I've actually done a couple of them. I'll be happy to show you. So, now they have a thing in the Bible called parallelism. And we're about to take a look at it. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. 
So in other words, when a prostitute or a homosexual, a sodomite, goes to the house of the Lord and wants to, you know, oh, here, let me give you some seed money, some tithe money or whatever. <laughs> Thou shall not bring the hire of a whore. You know, a prostitute making money by, by being a whore, a prostitute, you're going to accept a tithe from her? Thou shall not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. You know what an abomination is? That's a sin that God especially hates. There's not many sins that God really, really, really hates, but sodomy is one of them. Now do you know what a, a dog is? In Proverbs 26 and verse 11, we read, As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. You ever seen that? A dog throws up something, you know? But, but I've seen dogs eat their own vomit. You know, it's like something upset their stomach. They got rid of it. And then they go right back to it. It's like, and that's what, a, you know, you could witness to somebody. And then they sort of kind of believe, but then they go right back to their old ways. So now when you read Matthew 7 and verse 6, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. You know, I've heard some people say sodomites can't be saved. I've heard others say they can. Ah, uh, you know, I don't know. But all I know is the Bible says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you, tear you to pieces. All right, let's go back. Matthew 13, 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Who was the pearl? The pearl that the Lord was seeking was his people, Israel. He found the pearl of great price. He went and sold all that he had. He left heaven. He came down to earth. He suffered thirst, hunger, being sleepy, pain, and suffering. He sold everything that he had, and he bought the church with his own blood. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What's a harlot? A whore. Didn't we read about the price of a whore? What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. For he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Oh yeah. Didn't the, 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 the man buy the, the field for the pearl? He sold everything that he had, and he bought the field, and the field is the world. For ye are bought with a price. Wherefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Oh, yeah. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 23. Get a second witness. Paul. Boy, I tell you what, they, they sure hate 
Paul. Uh, let's see. First Corinthians 7 and verse 19. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of God. Now, that's something. Keeping the commandments of God. Now, that's something. But circumcision, that means nothing. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Art thou being uh, called being a servant? Care not for it, but if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise, also he that is called, being free, is Christ's servant. Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Bre uh, brethren, let every man wherein he is called, therein abide with God. Second Peter chapter two verse one. You know it's funny. People will tell you usually those of the uh, Hebrew roots sacred name persuasion. They'll tell you Second Peter doesn't belong in the Bible. It's a fake book. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily, uh, privately, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So in Matthew 13, 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Oh, yeah. He wants that pearl. And not to cast it before dogs, and not to cast it before swine. All right, let's take a look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. We'll take a look at that. We read, you know, it's funny. Timothy was Paul's young pastor. All right, verse uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Modest apparel? Boy, I tell you what. I look around America, I see women with shorts with their cheeks of their rear ends sticking out. Uh, I mean, you know, it's just modest apparel. That's, you don't see that very much anymore. That women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. You know, I've complimented a few women for wearing uh, long dresses that cover their legs, you know? And it's amazing. I the um, It's amazing how many people that pretend or think they're church people will condemn Muslim women because... They cover themselves, and I'm not talking about those full burqas where you can only see their eyes. I'm not talking about that. But uh, that wear scarves that cover their heads, you know, and they think, oh, if you don't wear a bikini that uh, shows uh, more skin than uh, Kim, Kim Kardashian or some of those uh, whores that get up on the stage and sing, I won't mention any names, but uh, what can I tell you? But, but they think, oh, well, you know, if you don't wear a bikini, uh, you're not, uh, I, I don't know. The Lord says to adorn yourselves in modest apparel, not to dress like a whore. What can I tell you? All right. right. 
So who was this guy, uh, pearl of great price? In part one, we learned the treasure was Israel. But in Matthew 10, 20, uh, verse 10, verse 6, Jesus told the disciples, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In Matthew 15, 24, Jesus said, But he answered and said, I am not sent, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So, Matthew 15, verse 6, And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. Jeremiah 15, verse 6, My people hath been lost sheep, their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. Didn't Jesus say he was the shepherd? Oh, yeah. In Matthew 18, 11, For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Take a look at Galatians chapter 3 and verse, so let's see, verse 26, Galatians 3, 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. For those of you that don't know it, God made his promise, his covenant with Abraham. Abraham had Jacob. Um, that was his grandson. And Jacob was Israel. That was his name. It was Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israel. And Jacob was the father of the 12 tribes. So, let's take a look at Revelation chapter 21. We're going to close this out. All right, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new, and he said unto me, right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and saucers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Isn't that interesting? They always say the church is the bride, right? And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, as opposed to the unholy Jerusalem, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. So there's 12 gates, 
with a name for each one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Where's the 13th tribe for the, the Gentiles, as the churches teach? There is none. There's only 12 gates. One gate for each one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Period. There is no 13th Gentile gate. Jesus said he came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So, 13, on the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, James. Right? And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. Verse 16, And the city lieth four square, and the length of it is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, an hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysophrius, I hope I pronounced that right, the eleventh a jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, the pearl of great price, right? And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no, no night there. Night, you know, day and night. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. All right, people, this is uh, the end of part two. Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and he's going to be the light of the New Jerusalem. There's not going to be any night, N I G H T, because there's only going to be light, L I G H T. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus who is the Christ in his precious name. Amen. Chaplain Bob signing off.